Now, the whole point is, as I have already told you, that we will try to get hold of uh, the number system and uh, in trying to do it, in trying to do it, we will uh, first uh, assume, we will assume, ah, what happened? We will assume, can you see? No. I Are you have, sharing your screen? No, you're not sharing your screen. No, I have not. I'll try to. Can you see it now? Not yet. Yes, I can now. Okay. We will assume the natural numbers. Now, one thing is pretty clear. This is just not a set. Okay, just let's take a test. Uh, so, if I tell you that, uh, if I ask you to give me uh, an element from the set of real numbers, can you give me? Element. Or why real from the set of natural numbers or from the set of integers? Uh, can you give me one? Just an element from the one of the set, one of one of the number sets. Yes. Yes, I can. Yes, give me. Se okay, seven. Seven. So, from which set? Uh, natural numbers. What is this number seven? How should I? How? 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 How would, how would, uh, well, how would you like your answer? Means, means, uh, no, 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 you say 7 is a natural number. Yes. So, um, suppose, uh, yeah, a young kid asks you the question, you tell him about the set of natural numbers, he asks an example, you say 7, then he asks, what is it? sense yes okay then uh, my answer would be um, the, like, uh, actually it's actually very hard to answer that to uh, to a small child in the sense that um, what my my response would be like numbers are, um, are abstract like they are not actual things that you can uh, see when you look say into like uh, the physical universe. But we are taught how to conceptualize or grasp grasp the idea of a number by saying one apple or one. I don't know one one house and things like that. So now uh, a number is an abstract concept. That's how I I, I, I take it. Okay, let's yeah. let's let's uh, let's let's upgrade the child to a BSc honors student. Uh, he asked this question, so he knows. Uh, Little, quite a bit of set theory, quite a bit of... Now he asks, what is 7? How will you answer it? So okay, he... If he understands the theory, then uh, 
uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a type of set that uh, conforms to the axioms we we use either like uh, the Zamelo Frankel or the other alternatives, uh, but it's a it's a realization of the axioms. Yes, how would you realize it? How do I realize it? Yes. You find a model that uh, that that, that uh, fits those axioms or that uh, manifests those axioms. Mm -hmm. So that that model that that model can be either physical or non-physical. So. Uh, Yeah, so so how would you say, what is this seven? Suppose he, he even tells you that he knows the piano actions, he knows set theory and so on. So what would, his be, what would your answer be to say, how would you get seven? Okay, uh, we, st we start off, for instance, with a set that doesn't have anything. Then we take its successes six times, then we get uh, to, to seven. If 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 we understand the set theory, then I don't. Okay, the so seven. you will start yeah. off. You start off with any set or with the empty no, set. No, with the with the empty set. Yes. And yes. Then I take its successes. Or I apply the successor function uh, six times, no, seven times, for years. Good. So, so your natural numbers, even with your, even if you assume any bit of set theory, or if you don't, it is just not a set. To describe it, you need some other extra uh, contraptions you, because you said you will start off with the, the empty set, then you need this spe special contraption like the successor function, right? And you will iterate it seven times. So, what I want to point out, or even say, if I say, give me a real number which is give me a real number. So, now you'll be in a deeper trouble, would it not be? Because, how will you define your real number? Uh, the problem is, that the, f the first thing that I want to bring home, that this is just not a set. It's a set plus a few other things. So that means if I bundle this in the in a single word like a structured a set with a structure. We'll try and see what does this structure mean. So unless you tell me about this structure, you cannot tell me a single element even of this set. The, the set is completely determined by that structure that comes along with it. Now, <clears throat> you will say, but that is true, uh, any set is by existential uh, existential axiom and he said is nothing else is completely determined by the properties that it uh, its members uh, all its members satisfy 
and well while this is true while this is very true but it denies us of the ability to to discern between any two of its elements let now this is a little bit uh, well you will have to get into this practice and then you will see uh, maybe near the end you will try get to realize what i am trying to say if you if you if you are if you don't tell me about the fact that this whole business of real numbers where you say that every real number has a unique uh, infinite decimal representation and blah 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 it it will be very very difficult to say uh, whether two real numbers if you give me they are equal or not yeah it will be very difficult even to pick up a real number uh, if you don't if you just consider it as a set so it is not just a set but a set along with certain structures so the whole idea therefore is to pin down this structure much more uh closely and so the description of the natural numbers which is best given by the piano arithmetic will be done at the end so what we will do is we will assume the natural numbers and from there we will try to recreate all our numbers okay so this is the project and so the project is assume this and recreate all our all other numbers but there is something more without reference to elements so this is the real crux of the project so we are not we will try to minimize or possibly eliminate completely descriptions using elements so what we will be use we will use functions relations and their properties to identify now this is the key word is to identify the number systems okay so that's roughly this now let us see what of natural numbers we will assume so we first take that there is this set of natural numbers whose elements we will still write as this but the next thing is there is an addition so this principle this we will assume for the time being 
So all these assumptions will be again be established uh, in the end just okay. from mere set theory. Okay? Okay, but uh, okay. if I may ask. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for, and this is more of a philosophical question in the sense that isn't, w would it say such uh, an such su 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 such an analysis and, 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 and description wouldn't it provide sort of a circular argument if like it's presented as an argument because of now uh, say I assume uh, these things and then uh, derive some 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 statements that follow from my assumptions and then later on uh, give justification to my assumptions. No. You're right, you're very right. What I'm doing is I'm I'm doing you can say mm, so I'm doing the second and third phase first, so it's it's a strange thing. I don't build yes. the, I don't build the foundation, but I build the first story and the second story. But it is not actually strange because nowadays it's even realizable. Uh, often, if you know. Uh, well, I heard it from one of my structural engineers. Uh, they first uh, build, because nowadays people do these plans and blah, blah, blah on, uh, on computer-rated design, right? So they actually don't build. So actually they kind of build an abstract model. Of, so. so they build the first and second floor and their structure their structure, their uh, design of first and second floor and what should be there and what should not be there and blah, 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 tells them how strong and how much deep the foundation needs to be. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so once we do this, then when we come back and revisit this assumption list, obviously, Something which we are not going to question is set theory. Okay? So, set theory is something which we are not going to question. So, our assumption of, of sets as the basic principle of describing mathematics still remains. So, just then, once we build up this total system, we come back and just from the preliminaries of sets give a concrete way again in the same vein as we have done from this uh, first floor second floor business right from the assumption of n in the same way as we have constructed our uh, numbers we will do in the same way we will give a construction or a validation that the assumption list actually can be validated from basic set theory. Okay? Oh, okay. So that makes it circular free then. Is it clear? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, why I do this is firstly. Uh, the, we need to identify our uh, our tools. I mean to say, what um, what we are trying to achieve first. Then the success in the uh, first and second phase will actually tell us whether it actually can be built, right? So that's why we take this uh, circuitous route. We don't start from. This. So, principle of mathematical induction is if for any for any set S okay, 
1, 0 belongs to S, 0 means this, 2, x belongs to S, where is obviously this along with I am taking, so the successor as you said, so I am defining this addition, okay? So, or, or you can, instead of doing this, let's do it in this way, plus the successor. So, x prime of x. So, 0 prime is 1, 1 prime is 2, and so on. Okay? So, if x belongs to x, then x prime belongs to s. For any set this, these two shall imply that the natural numbers is a subset of this. Okay? So that's that's it. Okay. And then we also assume this binary operation. Which is uh, So what is it? So we define this as x plus 1 is uh, obviously x plus 0 we define it to be x x plus 1 is x prime and x plus y is x plus y1 prime if y is y1 prime. Uh, right? Okay. Yeah. So you know how am I defining it and it turns out and that This is commutative. Associative. Zero is the identity. Commutative, associative with zero the identity. Right? Obviously, you know that this definition would tell us uh, about uh, uh, once we assume this and so on, how it will come out from induction and so on. We are going to use that, but that's the last stage. Also, we are going to use this uh, multiplication, so which I will write as x times 1 is x and x prime sorry x times uh, let me write this in this way x plus instead of this let me write it in this way x plus y prime is x plus y and the successor of that so this is y plus x. Okay? So, that yes. is, with that again, this is, we will call this multiplication, which is commutative associative 1 is identity and distributes over addition. For number three then, we, we, we can also remove uh, x plus one then, because of it follows immediately yes, from the correct. third one. Yes, yeah, correct, you are correct, yes.
your right okay and then uh, we would have finally x is less than or equal to y if and only if there exists a z such that y is x plus z and we know that this is a partial order so this is reflexive antisymmetric and transit. Okay? So, we have this. So, now, I will indicate the process of uh, the process of creating Z. Now, uh, firstly, some definitions. Suppose if you have a set X and you have a binary operation so which I am writing in short as X, Y although I don't mean that X is a set of numbers or this, this is a multiplication of any sort and I have a <coughs> this is called you know when is this called associative when is this called commutative you know that right mm -hmm. so you know these properties I assume associative commutative and I, I believe you also know that they are independent beings there can be an example of a commutative binary operation which is not associative and associative which is not commutative. You also know the meaning of has an identity. Yes. Right? Yes. That means there exists an E in X such that X E is equal to X is equal to X. And you also know the fact that in case of uh, this identity, this identity is always unique, right? Yes. And then you know what it means to have an inverse so in this case you will need the identity and then yes. uh, if you have an y and then you know that in case of associative binary operation with an identity an element has at most one inverse That means, suppose if you tell me that X has two inverses, Y prime and Y double prime. I'm, re I'm using this one as my identity, okay? Okay. And then you can write Y prime is equal to y prime 1 which is y prime x 
y double prime. Now you are going to use the associativity. But this is equal to 1 y double prime. So it would be nice if you could uh, if you could find out an example of a binary operation where an element has more than one inverse. So therefore you are definitely have, you would have to search in case when the, when it has it is not associative. Right? So in a case of associative binary operations, the inverse is unique. I will now here are certain structures. So a magma. What is it? This is a set with a binary operation. So just nothing else. You just have a binary operation. This is the usual names. Okay? Just uh, if uh, you yeah, unitary magma This is a magma with an identity element. So the identity element obviously comes packed with that binary operation, okay? So, so that's an unitary magma. Uh, semi group. This is nothing else but an associative magma. The adjective associative is to the binary operation. See already, already see this word unitary. Often the identity element is often called the unit when it is expressed like a multiplication as above I have written. Sometimes you will see that we will even uh, prefer to write the operation as an addition. In my case, I use it if I know that it is, a it, it is commutative. Then I write it as an addition and the identity is then usually called zero, the zero element and so on. Because, yeah. So, you see the, the adjective unitary is applied to magma, whereas it actually in in reality it is the adjective is to the binary operation so this is often the often the practice so same over here associativity is to the of the binary operation but it is applied to the structure so it's magma so that's called a semi group a monoid this is a uh, this is a unitary associative magma which is the same as a semigroup with an identity And a group, this is a monoid in which every element has an index. Okay? And an abelian group. This is a 
communities. Uh, <clears throat> there is also another name for this, it is also called a commutative group. There is uh, also an old name over here, instead of magma, of also people sometimes call this a groupoid. But to be careful, the usage has changed in the old textbooks, I mean to say pre-70s. or even pre-mid-60s. Uh, the usual term what we use for magma was a groupoid. But, oh, okay. but later on the term groupoid got associated with something else. We will see that. But uh, uh, And the term magma I don't know why and who invented it came up came up uh, so this is the first list of uh, I hope the you you are already you know them right I just yes. you okay and then some special uh, homomorphisms so if you if X and Y again when I say that X is a magma I should have actually written it like this, right, where M is the binary operation. Mm -hmm. I should have written it like this. But, uh, again, when time demands it, I will do it. And uh, in general, I will say X is a magma, means I know uh, that you are also aware of or the everyone, those who are reading it is aware that of the binary operation which is there. Okay, and I will often say in this usage, I will say that if X is a magma, so I often uh, the over here actually I am referring to this pair, so X and M as the magma. And this is often called the underlying set of the magma. Okay? Of the magma. Yes. So now, uh, so suppose if you have a magma X and a magma Y, and a function, so a function. So, a function of the underlying sets is a magma homomorphism. f of x x prime is equal to f x and f x prime. Obviously, this is the binary operation in x and this one is the binary operation in what right yes so this is my uh, you can immediately see that if the if if you have for instance uh, uh, one minute and so it's a the set of obviously every function may not be a uh, magma homomorphism so we will often write uh, like this this to denote the set of 
all magma homomorphisms. from x to y. Okay. Uh, this is the set of all unitary magma homomorphisms. So, what is this? This is exactly F, which is a magma homomorphism with the added fact that it preserves the identity. So the identity is F1 is one. Clear? All right. Uh, this is although we will say that this is the set of all semi-group homomorphisms, that means X and Y are semi-groups, right? Uh, so that means it's an associative magma. And observe if you have a if you have x and y to be semi groups and a homomorphism is just a magma homomorphism, then it is a semi group homomorphism, right? So we can actually write something like this. This the the, 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 the this set is actually nothing else but So now when I'm writing this, you have to be a little more careful in interpreting this. This is the set of magma homomorphisms between two semigroups because X and Y are semigroups already. Okay, so just be careful in this interpretation. What I am saying is that semi-group homomorphisms uh, are nothing, nothing more special than magma homomorphisms. Only just the fact that it is, it is a magma homomorphism between two semi-groups. Okay, and similarly the monoid homomorphisms. In the same vein, this is nothing else but the unitary magma homomorphisms between the two monoids. Okay? And obviously, uh, you can see, so group, this is F, which is a monoid homomorphism because you know that groups have uh, the extra property that it is and it is this f of x inverse is fx inverse right yes and this is we'll write it like this for rebellion groups this is nothing else but the same thing. Okay. So now, what I will do is, I will complete today with a, with a statement, and then next day I'll uh, I give a, I'll just so. I'll ask you to prove something, but uh, firstly, so the, what is the statement of the theorem? This is called the Grothendieck group. So what is it? Given any commutative monoid
M. There exists uh, an abelian group which I will write just over here in gamma m. It's written like this. Okay? And a homomorphism which I will write as this So obviously you should sense this is a abelian group. So there are things which are invertible over here. Everything may not be invertible over here. So this homomorphism, maybe I'm demanding just so it's a homomorphism of monoids. such that for any abelian group A and a monoid homomorphism I should, as I was denoting the groups by yellow. There exists a unique group homomorphism. such that you can present this in a diagrammatic form like this. We will often see such diagrams very often now. This exclamation mark is to indicate that some kind of uniqueness. There is a difference between the bold and the dotted lines. The dotted lines would always indicate that given those bold lines, this one is then would exist, right? This one follows up. Okay? okay. If, if the bold lines are given, so it is kind of told that they exist, but from their existence you can deduce the existence of that dotted line and, and that exclamation tells you to deduce the existence of that unique dotted line and such diagrams are often called commutative diagrams. They are nothing else but diagrammatic representation of such equations. So what does this mean? What is the idea behind a commutative diagram? So it looks like this. 
so there are several nodes okay and there are arrows connecting them okay something like this now you can think of them as paths so see from here to here there are two paths this followed by this and this one same from here to here there are also two paths from here to here there is only one path now i'll say that the diagram commutes if so firstly there must be a way to say the composition in most cases we will see that there is a along with every commutative diagram there is a notion of composing these paths so how do you compose you have a path followed by a path there is a way to find a third path from the beginning to this end which will be called the composition right now this composition in most cases we will see shall be associative so that means uh, what i am saying is something like this so you could have something like this and this so say uh, say H. Now the composite, uh, the most uh, ge in general, we will write it like uh, this, as if like a multiplication, but uh, or also like this, what we do for usual things. Uh, the composite will be defined for every such arrow there is a starting point or the domain and the ending point or the target or the codomain so it must be like this the starting point of uh, one which is uh, must be the ending point of the one like this right so in such a case only we will say that this pair can be composed and that this is called the composition. So we will define them properly next time. So here is it HG. So associative therefore means that HG and F this is same as HGF. So there shall be some rules which in most of our cases this composition would be uh, usual composition of functions right so over here if you reduce all of this so this means that the this this is nothing else but an equation this diagram is just a diagrammatic way of writing this equation but uh, you will see very soon the moment we draw diagrams to represent certain facts, they, these facts, the diagrams will start to speak and there shall emerge a pattern from them. So that's that and that pattern would therefore indicate to a common phenomenon and so on. So, we will see this uh, principle. I will stop here today. What I will ask you is, uh, say, take some simple cases. Hmm? Take some simple cases, say, uh, because you said that you have seen some monoids and so on. Take, say, M to be the singleton so one element set monoid on one element set
first see what is this then monoid of two element set and so on okay and do the same thing for groups also so when you find out this one element set also see whether this is a group whether this is an abelian group and so on and say you carry on this set this project say up to say six or seven elements you can even do more and for each case try to identify if you can if you can this gamma n. okay what is this gamma n in each case i have not given you the construction but try to make a sense of this so you should be you would try to find an abelian group associated with M along with that eta such that this strange thing holds. Once you do this exercise you will you will start to have a feeling of what the heck is this gamma M. Okay? Now where will we go? So we will actually understand what this prothetic group business is and in fact what we will show is, see, we will show that the Grothendieck group, so now I am very formal, that the Grothendieck group of this, remember, I need to tell you what is the addition and what is the identity element. So that's why, and this is a commutative associative with this identity, so it's a monoid. This is, this is nothing else but your integers plus and zero. Okay, so we will very soon see that this is not exactly an equality. So let this is not exactly an equality, but it is something called an isomorphism, which we will come to it. But it is as good as this, right? And then we will proceed to, this is the first step. And then use this to describe the multiplication and order relation. There's the first goal. The second goal would be, I would be a little more vague over here. Well, to show that this, so now I will take So the non-zero integers with respect to multiplication, this is nothing else but the rationals, non-zero rationals with multiplication in this. So you see this simple procedure And then we will again 
captured the addition and the order. Okay. Okay, but then that, uh, we, we, the second one, you said you are being a bit big. Are we are, are we then going to use multiplication to, like you said, capture addition? So we do it the other way around. Because of our, my next question would have been, what if we take um, the Grothendia group of the integers with addition? Good. Is that then isomorphic to the, the rationals? Good. With addition. Good. Good. So this depends. Else. Your your question, you will soon find an answer. Uh, maybe, maybe you will get a hint and that is when you take, when you study the two element monoid, you should get an answer and trying to find that gamma m of it, you should get an answer or even over here, you should get a hint of an answer, okay. So I leave it there, yes, you are very right, we could have taken that and why did we not do it? And the answer is again here, hmm? in this exercises and so on. The answer is there. Yeah. So that tells us why we didn't take uh, the plus integers with plus, but we took this. Okay. Multiplication. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll have a look. Just have okay. a look at that. Okay. So with that, I'll stop today. Uh, I'll send you the link and this, uh, uh, I'll convert this uh, into a PDF, this is what I ever wrote, so that you'll have this uh, PDF file with you, as well as the video, if you want to download it, you should be able to download it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then with respect to some of the exercises, uh, I'll just type them out as well and then maybe uh, send them to you as in PDF form. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good work.